the presenter is downtown receiving an award for playing basketball at noon. Uh, Pat Bauman was on the first staff, and I was on the first staff. And in the bio, it said she was the youngest faculty member. Well, I kind of know why she was the youngest <laughs> faculty member. That when the, uh, the dean of instruction and the president got together to say, wh who, what kind of a faculty are we going to hire for the first year of Barton County? They came up with the thought that they're going to hire, excuse the term, old teachers. But Pat Bauman over at McPherson was so outstanding, they said, well, let's break the rule. And so they broke it in more ways than one by hiring Pat. Uh, and, it, and then uh, everyone at the college that was hired was hired as a teacher, a faculty member. Somebody wanted to call everybody professor. But that was their job. And then the president and the athletic director come up like me and say, you're going to be the golf coach. You're going to be the tennis coach. You're going to be the basketball coach. You're going to be the track coach. And so everybody, I think I'm right, taught a full load. Yes. Everybody taught a full load and then did their sport on the side. And, but everybody was happy. I remember Dr. Robinson always coming up, and she'll back me up on this. Every time he'd see you, he'd say, are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. I got a new Army surplus piece of equipment the other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was going back in the beginning. Um, besides being psychology teacher, Pat was the women's tennis coach and what a record she has and you can read in the bio about the, the conference championships the region championship the time she spent going to the nationals it's just great great and they were just coming on to play tennis for Pat uh, she had two conference championships two undefeated teams two regional six championships five national tournaments appearances Oh, and by the way, Jack Bowman needed a little assistance, so she helped coach the men's track team. <laughs> then she coached the men's tennis team when we decided to expand our sports. At first, there was only four sports. And um, during her college career, advancing all the time because of the type of person she is, uh, her role at the college changed all the time. She became chairperson of the social science division later director of the assessment, and then learning and writing center, the director, then the evening division, and later director of institutional research, along with the evening and summer programs. Now that's enough, well that last one was enough for three people, but Pat being a psychology teacher and a tennis coach and a cheerleading coach and a, you know, she can do it. Uh, I don't know if Pat remembers this, but when we were, uh, a tale about Pat, we were division chairs together and had lots of tales, but we won't get into that. <clears throat> but uh, one time, all at once, the state rules changed about driver's license. We traveled in vans all the time, so we were going to have to get a special license to drive the vans. So all the coaches got in a van and went downtown to go to the highway patrolman to test, be tested. So I went out with the first one I volunteered. So I went out with the highway patrolman and did the testing. 15 passenger van, you know, about as long as from here to that wall when you're in there trying to drive them. And so when I got back, they said, how'd it go? And I said, man, I did all right until I tried to parallel a park that thing. And so Ray Bouchard, who's the volleyball coach at KU now, I'll go next. And so he went out and drove the van came back. How'd it go, Ray? Just like JB. Man, I did all right until I tried to parallel park that thing. And so we just kept on going down, and Pat was going to be the last one. And by that time, she was just like this. <laughs> we didn't have to parallel park any time. <laughs> Will you welcome Pat Bauman, please? <laughs> I have no notes simply because I feel more comfortable
talking to you as though I was a teacher as opposed to getting in front of a microphone and making speeches. So this is going to be kind of an ad lib kind of a, an affair. What uh, JB didn't tell you is in that first year, we, he and I would have conversations, shall I say? Uh, one of the things that the cheerleaders had to do that first, the, at least while I was in charge of them, was both cheer, do dance routines, make signs, be physically fit, and Jan will tell you back there about running the stairs. Uh, but most importantly, work with the band in dealing with the routines the dance routines based upon the music that JB gave us at the beginning of the year. So we would always have these conversations, correct? <laughs> Some of them were a little heated. <laughs> we're both opinionated. Nothing unusual about that, but about the music and the routines and the kinds of things. But the one thing I can tell you is those of us who had the privilege and the honor of being here the first year, being able to start something that turns out to be this, and then later to come back and be honored is totally beyond comprehension. Uh, when they called and told me I was being honored, I didn't even know we had a Hall of Fame. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, when you leave 16 years ago, it's, you move halfway across the country, sometimes those things just kind of slip by. But to be able to come back and to be honored is a very, very big privilege. To see some of my former tennis team, some of my former cheerleaders, the people that I worked with, some of them that I had as students in my classroom, is have been a fantastic weekend and I couldn't ask for more. But I think the biggest shock was my niece and her family showing up today. I didn't know they were coming, so thank you, Debbie. Um, when you look back on the history of the institution and the things that we were able to accomplish, all of us will say that if it wasn't for the support system, if it wasn't for the administration, if it wasn't for the student body, if it wasn't for the board of trustees, and in particularly in JB's and my case, if it wasn't for the booster club, we would not be standing here. Cheerleaders today would not have scholarships if it wasn't for the booster club saying, these kids work so hard, they deserve to be treated as an athlete as well as, and so I'm thankful for the booster club for coming through when they did, when we were the first in the state to be able to say to, to the cheerleaders, you deserve the same kind of scholarship as the rest of them. One of the other things I'm very proud of is the accomplishments that my tennis team was able to make. They worked very hard. It started out in the fall of being, or the, in the very beginning, just being a fall sport. And then you were finished by October 15th, and then I could spend the rest of the year dealing with the cheerleaders. Well, tennis became something more than just a fall sport. It became both a fall and a spring sport, just like golf, correct? Uh, so we, we were now here. And so then we had to, to do with the rest of it. Uh, and to be able to accomplish all of that, and the one year or the two years that I was having to do some other things like, uh, I'd hate to even mention it, track when I know nothing about track. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jack Bowman, I feel sorry for him to this day for having to, he said, Pat, you take the girls and I'll deal with the rest. And I said, thank you, but tell me what I'm doing. Because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> track is not my sport. Okay. Uh, to deal those kinds of things and to allow the students, and in that case, the track girls, those five or six track girls that came out for track, they had to coach themselves. I couldn't have coached. I mean, honestly and truly, <laughs> they helped themselves more than I helped them. They helped me uh, to grow as, as, a, as, a, as a person, as a coach, and as a, as a faculty member. When you deal with the people that able to help me get through tennis, classroom, uh, cheerleading, the regional director's jobs that I had, the representation of having to go and 
represent the college in the state of Kansas at uh, the national events in etc. I could not have done it without two people. One of those people is standing up, uh, sitting up here on the stage. That's Dana. Um, if she hadn't been there to help me get through some of those days, I don't know how in the world I'd have done it. Uh, the other one was Joyce, because I hired Joyce to come in and work and run the physical education, be the secretary to the physical education department. And uh, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> she ran the swimming pool. She helped Gary run the swimming pool and some other things like that, that we could not have accomplished the things that we needed to accomplish if I hadn't had the support that they did. The other thing that I need to say is that we had the support of the other coaches. One coach helped the other. It wasn't a case of this sport being against this sport being against this sport being against this sport. We all worked together and we were a team. The same way, the same philosophy when JB and I were division chairs. It was the division chairs working together. It wasn't one division against another division. And Margie's back there when Jim was with us and Jim was a, a division, Naren was a division chair along with JB and I and uh, who else? Uh, Lavona, Les Rebel and Lavona, Lou Coatman. We worked as a team. We did not work as a the whole academic organization of this institution worked as a team, and it was always for the advancement of the students, and that was our primary responsibility to make sure that they had the best education in the the most economic and efficient way and that they could become successful in life afterwards. That I am the proudest of. All the rest of it, academics always comes first. And that's what I'm proud of. Thank you again for this great honor. I appreciate it. Thank you.